All right, so we talked about demons, but now let's talk about angels. The conversation surrounding angels is similar to the one surrounding demons in that you can debate many aspects of this conversation, but one thing you cannot debate, especially if you call yourself a serious scholar of the Bible, is the fact that angels do exist. Now, the doctrine of angels, or angelology for short, is an interesting doctrine, primarily because there are those who engage in this study with much fantasy and theories. Look, everyone has their idea of what heaven would be like. And of course, that seems to spill over into the conversation of fantasizing what angels would be like. And although I appreciate the enthusiasm and the excitement and the speculation surrounding these topics, there is actually very little that the Bible actually has to say about angels or even heaven for that matter. This means that if we are to be serious scholars of the study, we must first accept not just what the Bible does say about angels, angels, but also of what it does not say. Both are equally important in maintaining a healthy balance and outlook towards this topic. Now, what are angels exactly? Well, they are spiritual beings first and foremost, which means that they are not flesh and blood like you and I. This is important to point out because like us, they do have a will, they have an intelligence, and they have emotions. Hence why we have good angels and we have bad ones. Like I mentioned in my previous video about demons. And again, also like us, they are created beings. They are superior to us though, in that they possess greater knowledge, they are eternal, and in the presence of God 24-7. Seven. They also have other physical attributes that we humans lack. Now, although they have all of these things and privileges that we do not have, we still have to remember that angels, good and bad, are subjected to the same sovereign God, just like us. Now, unlike humans, angels are not created in the likeness of God. They can take on, however, the likeness of humans, or at least a physical form from time to time. One instance that comes to mind is the story of how the angels appeared to Lot in physical form to warn him about the impending judgment of Sodom in Genesis 19. The fact that the people of Sodom thought that the angels were men in verse 5 seems to indicate that these angels have taken on a human-like physical form to appear to Lot. Now, let's get to some common misinterpretations or theories of angels. First, let's start by addressing the idea that humans become angels when we die. This is false. This idea is not supported anywhere in the Bible. In fact, the Bible speaks on what happens to our bodies in the afterlife. First, our souls are taken to heaven or hell. Obviously, that depends on whether you're whether or not you're a believer. Then, for the believers, we are then given glorified bodies as passages like 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 through 54 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 17 seems to insinuate. We do not become angels. They are their own created being. Um, that got created in the created order. Now, let's address the confusion surrounding the conversations on the different types of angels. Despite what many people will have you believe, the Bible does not list a hierarchy of angels. The only distinction that the authors of the Bible deemed it worthy to point out is whether or not an angel is fallen or not. The Bible does mention different types of angels. For an example, there seems to be a difference between angels and archangels and a seraphim and a cherubim. But their differences lie in their functions and not necessarily in their roles. One type of angel that is not mentioned in the Bible, however, is guardian angels. Many have came to this assumption by reading way too much into Matthew chapter 18 and verses 10, where Christ said this, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. So, if you read this passage correctly, you'll notice that the angels' attention are on the Father and not on the children. Now, of course, there will be those who look deeply into that possessive pronoun there. But again, when understood in the broader context of scripture, we will quickly understand that this is nothing that is out of the norm. In fact, Israel had Michael, the archangel, assigned to them as the angel who contends by their side. But never has scripture indicated that we have each a guardian angel individually. 
again, that would be reading way too much into scripture. And you could also argue that it's a bit narcissistic to believe that. Now, speaking of the angels that are, are mentioned by name in the Bible, Michael and Gabriel are the only angels mentioned by name. So again, that should give you all types of signals to your brain and make us ask why. And the answer to that question is quite simple, actually. And that's because that's not the purpose of the Bible. We saw this demonstrated when the apostle John comes into contact with some angels while having his revelation. In Revelation chapter 19 and 10, he wrote this, Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. This account reminds us that the story of the Bible is concentrated on the story of the gospel and not on angelology. Now, the doctrine of angelology is important because if you get that wrong, it could affect how you understand other aspects of Christianity. There have been some cults formed out of a bad understanding of angelology, so by no means do I want to diminish its significance. However, we must remember that when engaging in this particular study, we must remain silent on the parts of the doctrine where the Bible is silent, and we must affirm the parts where the Bible speaks the loudest. If you hold to that rule of thumb, you should be all right. But above all, what you should conclude at the end of every study of angelology is the message or the purpose of these spiritual beings. And that's to give glory to God and to proclaim the message of the cross, the crucified Messiah who came to save those who believes in him. That's their role, their purpose and their function. So to highlight anything else after an in-depth study of them would be to miss the point entirely of their existence.